I just want to savor the moment, people. Savoring the beginning of the NFL season. And the game last night, it, it disappointed me a little bit because I was actually hoping that the Ravens would win that game because I've become kind of anti-Kansas City Chiefs, okay? Let's be real here. You get tired of seeing the same team winning all the time. They are becoming the New England Patriots, and you just get tired. I'm just tired of them. Just tired of them. I want somebody else out there. But to literally, we're, we're going to have to change the name or, or the, uh, what do you call it? The, the saying, a game of inches. Man, that was millimeters last night. It was so damn close. Literally, if he was a half a shoe size smaller, Baltimore has a chance to tie the game or to take the lead and win. That was the amazing thing that Harbaugh was without hesitation. We're going for two. He was going for the juggler. And I have to say that um, when the game first started, I'm going to be real with you. You know, it's, it's how fickle we are. And I realize how fickle I am. Okay. That we literally want what we don't have. You know, that game started out with Baltimore having like the perfect drive to um, score. What you saw was you saw Derrick Henry. He was chewing up some yards, you know, up the middle and things, right? Which set up the play action. You saw, you know, Lamar Jackson hitting guys outside and then going people deep and then him mixing in the run. And you were like, this is the kind of offense that you want to have. The death by a thousand cuts. That there's not just one thing that you can stop. Not just one thing. Lamar Jackson was, was unbelievable. Was unbelievable because literally... He ended up having like, what, 120 yards rushing, 270-some yards passing, a TD pass. He was unbelievable. He did everything he could to elevate the team to win. But Derrick Henry, when we started out the game, he got that touchdown early and everything. And we're like, oh, man, we could have had Derrick Henry. And then you started looking and saying, wait a minute, as the game progressed, as the game progressed, and it was kind of like, okay, um, hmm, hmm wasn't as good as you thought it was. He averaged about three and a half yards a carry, had about 11 carries or so in the game, 11, 12 carries. Nothing spectacular, nothing that said, oh my God. But as that first drive was over with, I literally posted and said, we could have had Derrick Henry. He did a little short video during the game and popped it up. We could have had Derrick Henry. So we'll see how those moves make because a lot of times, here's, here's the question. Now, see, and, and Derrick Henry is going to be used differently than he was in Tennessee. And that's not to say that one game is a big enough sample size to go on a season. It, it's nowhere near big enough sample size to judge a whole season. So don't quote me on that. What I'm saying is he's going to be used differently than he was in Tennessee, where he was the ground and pound back. But what you saw was early in the game where they could use him and pick up a few yards, how it opened up the whole offense. The Cowboys offense is probably going to be the reverse of that. Hopefully, all of our receivers are going to help open up the field because you got Jake Ferguson, who is up and coming tight end. Of course, you got CeeDee Lamb, who has finished the ramp up and is supposedly 100% ready. Today is uh, typically, at least in the past, Friday is what Mike McCarthy likes to call the recovery day. Now, I don't know if he's changed this up from last year or not, but it used to be that Thursday was the heavy practice for the team. And then Friday was the recovery day. Saturday is, of course, the travel day if they're going on the road. And then Sunday they play if it's a Sunday game. So we're assuming that yesterday was the, the, the last real big practice before the game. Um, and we have some news on uh, Carson, Carson, it's not good, um, but it may not be bad either. But for Baltimore, 
it ended up being after the second drive, they almost abandoned using Derrick Henry. He used him here and there, but it wasn't the same. They weren't able to really get him going and doing a whole lot. It ended up being Lamar Jackson and his legs buying more time and then being able to open up the passing game. And they fell two touchdowns behind, go down, score, and have that opportunity there. And you literally see the difference between winning and losing. The thing is, is people will point out, you know, Lamar Jackson's playoff record and things like that and say he's not good in the same way they say about Dak. You can't look at a performance like that and say it's on the quarterback. You can't blame the quarterback. The quarterback, it's a team game throughout. It's a team game. If the defense keeps Pat Mahomes out of the, the end zone one more time, you know, you, you, you win the game. If that toe is in, bounds is set out, you tie the game. There's so many different variables to winning and losing a game that you can't just pinpoint everything on one guy like everybody always tries to do with Dak Prescott. Football, there's five plays in every game. I don't care if it's a close one or a blowout that determine winning and losing. And that's it. That's it. Five freaking plays. So with that, Right now, there's more optimism as of yesterday about Dak Prescott getting his deal done before the season starts than it isn't. And it seems like if it isn't, the way it's progressing, it would be soon. So it seems like Dak doesn't seem like he is like, oh my God, I'm pissed off, this hasn't happened, and yada, yada, yada. He seems like he's okay with where things are going. You see the smile, his focus. And I want to play this this morning instead of listening to the talking heads that do nothing but trash the Cowboys and things. It's time to focus in on our Dallas Cowboys and them being the best team that they can be. Here we go. Significance or importance to wrapping something like this up from a team aspect going into a season where you don't have that hanging over, not just you, but, but everyone week in and week out. Ah, it's a great question. Maybe, uh, maybe from a team aspect, yeah. Um, you know, I've always talked about how present I can be, um, but understanding not everybody is capable of that, to be honest with you. Uh, that, yeah, there could definitely be some benefit in that. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, it's a lot that entails in parts and moving parts in the contract. And um, those guys, I know both sides are working. And, um, yeah. Are they working to get it done before the weekend? I would say that they're working. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the timeline. I can't say oh, how they're working. the timeline on to Todd and Steven if we don't get this done, this or that, but uh, I know they're working. But they're working toward getting one done. Yeah, they're working. Would you be okay if, say, we're in week two and they're still working, that kind of thing? I would still be working. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the only thing that matters to me. How, so. how are you able to compartmentalize in a situation like this? I've never played the game for that. Um, I play the game for, for the pure love for the guys in that locker room. Um, yes, this game has always brought me something that, that not a lot of things in, in life do. Um, that this type of piece that it does is being out there in between the lines with people that, that you share a brotherhood, um, you share a brotherhood with. Uh, yeah, it's something that's just special about this game of football and we're just blessed that that money comes with it and I'm in the position that I'm in that we can be having these conversations, but um, that doesn't motivate me. Last week you said it would say a lot about how people feel if it didn't get done now that we're only a few days away from week one. What would that feeling be if it doesn't get done by Sunday? People change their feelings daily. <laughs> uh, yeah, there ain't no lie on that one. Can't say I have the same feelings I had last week. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Hey, you if you don't have about the uncertainty, you know, this and that, also just the fact that you grew up, you know, rooting for this team, loving this team. How important is it to you, the opportunity to be the quarterback that ends this drought? Oh, that's uh, yeah. That's what that's what motivates me on being here. Honestly, is is to be the quarterback that that does it, that wins it. Um, I don't think that winning in any other place would be the same as winning it here. And so that is a number one. I want to be here to be honest with you. What are some of the uh, the bigger challenges of of the Browns defense? Obviously, they're one of the top defenses in the league. But just in breaking them down film wise in your meetings, what what are some of the things that stand out? Yeah, I mean they got an elite player on on every level. Um, whether it be Miles Garrett, obviously up front, Jock, don't don't know how to say his last name, the linebacker, 
uh, and then obviously Ward in, in the back end, and, and Dell put a lot of guys. Uh, so when you've got a, an elite guy on every level, um, that, that obviously is the strength. And yeah. then having played Schwartz early in my career, um, understanding what he wants to do, um, and, and watching their tape last year, they're very physical, they're fast, they know they they uh, know how to play to their strengths, and um, they're 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 a great great matchup for us. And I'm excited for us to kick off the air over there at their place. One, one, back, one more thing on the contract, right? why are you feeling this? better, different this week than it was last week. It I don't have any feelings toward it this week. I'm focused on the Browns and simple okay, as that. that. Okay. You mentioned the locker room. There's some guys that back you in very strong terms with some of the words they choose to support you. You walked into this locker room eight years ago with that ability to build relationships, it seemed like, from us from the outside. Um, was that true back then? And, and how has that relationship building, you think, been important for you? Um. Yeah, it's everything. You you've got to when you when you play this game, such a physical game, a team game with people that you love and that you pour into, and it's vice versa. Uh, it makes showing up every day. I don't even want to say easier, but but better. Um, you're excited. Uh, you mm -hmm. want to come in this locker room. You want to push guys to be better. Uh, you want to get to know know and help them on and off the field and in every which way that you can. And you become more than. Um, em employees with each other rather or co-workers with each other rather than true brothers and, and family and um, I've built some amazing relationships with teammates over, over these nine years and um, yeah I'm blessed I'm blessed with, with so many of those guys in there I know mm -hmm. we're talking about um, or maybe mo multiple guys but obviously I've seen what Cook said and I've mentioned time and time again that's one of the best men that, that, that I've ever played with um, obviously one of the best football players you've looked at his resume and what he's done but um, one of the best men and that's a guy he's an epitome of what I mean by somebody that just the way that they carry themselves the way that they approach life push you to be your best each and every day and um, there's, there's been so many of those guys and I'm fortunate to be the quarterback being able to connect with so many different people at this position and uh, something I don't take for granted any means. Speaking of your connection, how is it with CD Lamb and his ramp up, and how do you feel like he'll be in terms of ready, readiness for Sunday? Fresh chase. Yeah, he'll be just fine. <laughs> um, we've had two weeks now uh, getting getting him back in. Uh, obviously, in he was in shape, but just on the field, defenders on your back uh, or trying to catch in the tight windows. He's ready. I mean, he's an elite player, elite e -pl uh, elite player. Just turn on the film from last year, and you'll see that um, he's gotten better. Um, so right now, it's just about. Um, yeah, going out there and showing it for the both of us. When you look at what you and him were able to do last year, he led the league in yards after catch, also had the most targets. How do you balance wanting to feed that guy the ball as much as possible while elevating the other receiver? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what the, the other receivers have done in that time off is they've created that balance. Um, they allow me to go out there, go through my reads, and um, obviously then the coaches will put the guys in the position, whether they're one, they're two, um, it, throughout my reads. But I think that's also something that's – that was crucial in the time that he was gone is um, being for those young guys to be able to step up, create more of a rapport with me, um, to understand uh, where I'm trying to throw the ball, our breaking points, um, the windows I want, uh, and just understanding our timing. Um, that, that's, that's helped everybody. And so now that CD's back, it's really just bonus that we're all in the same page that we are, and then you have an elite player like that to add to the mix. Amen to that. Oh. Somehow we lost it. Hmm. Obviously, we've talked about your contract, Mike's yeah, contract, did. so many players on, you know, on one-year deals. The beginning of the season seemed different than past years. It seemed more on the line for everybody, this team, this franchise. Yeah, perhaps. Um, as you just said it, right? Everybody, I think if you look, per if they, we all look personally into last year, of, last year of our deal, it's going to create a little bit of that. Um, but then when you look to the left, the right, and there's so many people in that situation, um, I think it makes it a little bit easier to, to lock in and, 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 and wrap those arms around each other and say, uh, this is on us to, to, to change that, to make a difference, mm -hmm. um, to be here next year. And uh, also just going into year nine, all my past experiences, all of that plays in hands, plays into the hand of making me, this team better um, and, and making that, that, that uh, feel feel different, I guess you could say. You mentioned Cooks from a, from a personal standpoint, but when you guys were on the field, y'all have had another year together. You spent time up there with him. Yep. There are going to be opportunities. You guys know that they're going to look at CD and try and take him away. Can you see a little bit higher level of opportunity between sure. you and him this season? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you just said, especially going into the season, 
knowing that teams are going to take away 88. That's just uh, or try to take away 88 as as they should. Um, and so when, when that you need these other guys to step up and, and Cooks being the veteran, being the guy that whose resume out of those others um, st stands alone. You, you know he has the production. You know he has the in-game production against different opponents with different quarterbacks. So for me, it's about making sure that our, um, our rapport, as I said, is, is um, invincible. So we understand where we both, what we both want to do. Um, I can anticipate more with the guy. Uh, he, he understands when, when I'm throwing the ball in and out of routes. And yeah, I could definitely, you can, we all can expect a little bit more um, out of him. Mm -hmm. Comfort I'll, level with BB right now, especially a rookie center, and you guys got to make the calls together, that kind of thing. Great, very, very comfortable. Um, I think it goes back to I love the, this. Uh, the coaches made the change. I told him, hey, get up there, make a confident point, be confident in, in, in what you're seeing. And then if it's not, if I want to change it, I'll just do it. By, I'll just do that. And so don't be hesitant. Um, understand that, that you have the talent, you've got the makeup to, to do this. And uh, for me, it's just about pouring the confidence I have into into him um, to making sure that he knows he's got not only me, but a locker room and guys who support him and know that he can go do the best and get his job done. Is, Is there something special you noticed about his mental makeup For sure. that will allow him to make that jump? Yeah, a guy loves football, always mm -hmm. focused. Um, yeah, his demeanor doesn't change. Um, good play, bad play, he's on to the next. Um, and that's something that – that, that I love, that, that I my, myself do. So um, when you see that, that's contagious. When, and when you're the center of that old line, um, sure, I make calls and all that, but he's the one talking directly to the guards and, and making sure that that gets passed out to the tackles and tight ends. And so um, it's definitely contagious. He has, a, he has definitely a, a great demeanor about him that um, he'll be a hell of a player for a long time, as long as he wants in this league. Well, Amen. Cooper said earlier this week that he's he's confident in making those calls, but he knows that you can can clean it up. Is that common for a veteran quarterback to do that for a rookie? And does that necessitate you maybe wanting the calls even earlier from the sideline in case you need a little extra time? Um, I'm, I think we've got a great pace uh, just in the way that that we play this game, the way that Mike calls it, um, the way that we've been practicing. So um, the pace is going to take care of itself. And, uh, yeah, as a, as a veteran quarterback, yeah, it's on me. When I was a rookie, I had a veteran center, veteran center who did it all for me. So um, I think it's just, right, roles have switched. And so um, for me, it's about, as I said, pouring my confidence into him that, hey, you, you know what you're seeing. Go up there and make the call. And if mm -hmm. I see something I want to get to outside of that, just make the adjustments from there when I make the call, and, and we're good to go. And so uh, the communication's go. been outstanding with him. The receivers, Mike, Mike, a bunch of your receivers have talked about throwing with you in the offseason and the work you guys have been able to get in. And it was kind of a big deal when you got that field in your backyard. But now looking back on it with all the work that you guys have got, do you think you've gotten the, the return on investment? For, for sure, you? for sure. Um, yeah, definitely. Do you think that you've set a trend maybe for franchise quarterbacks to, to do that across the league? Uh, if they're smart, uh, but then again, um, there's been days here, whether it was the summer or not, it was hot, and I've had to use a couple of high schools, so fortunate to those guys as well. So mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe I can put a bubble on it, you know, with this, yeah. with this new contract. Comes around. Oh, with this new contract. <laughs> what, should people um, what should people expect from Zeke? Yeah, yeah I mean, obviously, we, I've talked about just the ultimate team player he is. Um, obviously, you probably won't see the, the amount of carries he had once he w was once a Cowboy, but you're going to see a guy who's productive in everything that we ask him to do, whether it's running the ball, whether it's the pass protection, um, truly self self uh, selfless player who wants to do anything and everything for his teammates, and um, it's going to show in just his aggressive and his physicalness throughout the game. Has he come back with the same personality he had before? As in fun or? Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's Zeke. <laughs> Zeke's not going to change. And um, it was great to just get him back refreshing. Um, but as I've always said, he can be fun. But the moment it's time to lock in inside those lines, nobody's better at that. Mike, Mike announced a theme for the season. Really. Can you just talk about your mm. impression of that and what you thought it was amazing? Um, I thought it was amazing. Um, a guy that, that talks about being present where my where my feet are, um, it goes to, to my roots. It goes to my mom, goes to my brothers, it goes to, you know, um, it's why I love this game. Uh, this game is rooted in me. Um, going thinking about you know the days the days in the trailer park playing in the field behind the house with my brothers being the youngest of the group um that's why the joy for this game is so big um because that's where i fell in love with it it's those guys that i think about um uh, my brothers uh the, the the love that my mom put into this game for not just me but my brothers as well and um Dang. yeah and then as, as mike referenced it right the first five years uh you know the roots are growing the roots are getting strong uh but you don't necessarily see um, what comes out of the ground uh, uh, until his time when he was talking about the Chinese bamboo. And so um, 
yeah, just understand when you're doing everything right, you're putting in the work in that you need to, um, you'll, reap, you'll reap the rewards when it's time. Amen. All right, Cooper, maybe here you go. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. I don't know how you can't. Like, how are you feeling? I, I, I'm sorry. To me, I don't know how people can hate the guy. The guy is a fantastic human being. He gives everything on and off the field. And um, you, you guys, you know, here, here it is. I think about some of the moves that people have said that the Cowboys should do when Russell Wilson was on the trading block. Trade for Russell Wilson. Let that bum walk. And you look at right now, here it is. Pittsburgh has him. He's injured right now and is not may not be able to start. You know, it, it, and you think about when people said Dak Prescott couldn't carry Deshaun Watson's jockstrap, and you look at what Cleveland gave up monetarily in draft picks. When we've heard teams say, tank for Tua, we'll be all right if we just go ahead and tank for Tua. It, it, and it's crazy because as we go through all of these guys that every year it's the brand new flavor that everybody gets on, oh, we need this guy. We should get that guy. Blah, yeah, it, and it ends up being none of them are worth shit in the long run. They don't have staying power. You look at the quarterbacks that have come and gone while Dak Prescott's still there. It's actually an amazing thing. And to be honest, we are very, very fortunate that the Cowboys lucked the F out and were able to get him. And this is what others see in Dak Prescott. This is the defensive coordinator for the Browns. For months, what, what do you see in him? Yeah, I mean, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, you know, all the stats across the board, you know, high completion percentage and and yards. He can, um, he can make something out of nothing when it comes to plays breaking down, using his legs. Doesn't run quite as much as he used to, but he's mainly running with a purpose now, buying time to find plays down the field. Um, and then running in high leverage situations, red zone, short yardage, and, and those kind of things. It's a tough matchup right off the bat. One of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So, um, you know, we're we're going. We 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 have to play our very best when you're competing against a quarterback like Dak Prescott. Yeah, okay. For months, what what do you see? There you go, guys. So, with that being said, tonight, oh, it's part two. We got the Eagles against the Green Bay Packers, and I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get back to streaming that game tonight um we'll have our exclusive philly 500 meltdown cam uh where hopefully we'll see philly 500 meltdown uh we'll be starting at eight o'clock and also let me say shout out to everybody who uh is still following my other channel we were able to with the new computer system and i appreciate it. here's where you guys help me because you hit the like button, you hit the subscribe button, uh, you give the thumbs up and all that. It helps the YouTube algorithm to share our content even more. And by doing that, becoming a channel member, becoming doing super chats and things, we're able to constantly grow. And if you want to know how much we've grown, check out Cowboy Joe Boo, my other channel. And you'll see where we literally started with originally this one locker over here on the other side and we've been able to grow we've got a new computer set up in here which is allowing us to do more and more things i'm still getting it set up and working and all that so look forward to a lot of great things that will be happening with this channel and i am so blessed to have each and every one of you guys and we'll see you tonight eight o'clock for our live stream peace Victory!